Hey guys, it's Greg. First Issue Club is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. You thought that trim engineering stopped at the 3.0? Well, Manscaped dared to push the envelope and made the 4.0 for you and your groin grooming. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code FIC20 at manscaped.com. Listen, guys, I get it. I've been there during the dark ages. I had my special designated scissors to trim my downstairs curlies. It only takes one time of cutting your beans to really make you think, why hasn't anyone really delved into groin technology? Where are the trim engineers who are going to forge a new path into pubic landscaping? And Manscaped says, well, we're here for you. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code FIC20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and with free shipping at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Hello and welcome into the First Issue Club, the weekly podcast that covers the number one issues of the week. My name is Greg, with me, Mike D. Hello. We are here to not necessarily talk First Issues. Um, A huge event happened recently called Free Comic Book Day. A sacred day in the comic book community because we get free stuff. Yes, we don't have many comic book specific holidays. This is one of them. This one, Black Friday. Black Friday. (laughs) And like the day after Easter is when all the comic book holidays are. Okay. Eh. I didn't know Black Friday and the day after Easter. (laughs) I assumed Black Friday because everyone else is having deals. So your comic book shop, your LCS wants to piggyback on that uh and after easter uh you know you're chock full of candy you're <laughs> and jesus maybe uh, uh-huh. if you participate and you're just raring to buy comics comics have risen it, we think jesus is the original superhero because he died and came back to life much like most of our favorite superheroes there's gotta be some conan-esque barbarians predating <laughs> Some, Jesus. Some caveman like, I, drawing of a you, superhero. Is Conan the Barbarian a superhero, though? You're saying in the timeline of the world. I thought that's what you were posturing here. I meant like the first written superhero. Okay. Like, I see the Bible as like this tome of fantastical. Yeah, it's sci- great sci fi. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm not trying to be rude towards religion, but like it is uh-huh. about fantastical stories. Goodbye, Catholic listeners. <laughs> <laughs> There's some amazing stories that happen. There's a talking snake. A lot of things that happen in comic books, uh, you know, derive from the Bible. You heard it here. Uh, Jesus' first appearance. <laughs> the Bible. The Bible. Get your hands on one while you what, can. What do you think CGC would do if you said, can you grade this Bible for me? <laughs> I think they'd send it back. Is it too big? Yeah, too big. I've never seen anything larger than like a one of those old Marvel graphic novels graded yeah. in a CGC case. That's true. I don't know how they would seal that and make sure it stayed. I'm sure there there are book grading companies that have mm-hmm. cases that would do it. I have seen because there's video game grading places. Exactly. Yeah, I've seen like video game cartridges uh-huh. and boxes be graded. So I guess if you paid up enough money to yep they would appease you and then see yep. you see a bible there's also these i it's really funny there's these like looser boxes that are kind of a catch-all for toys mm-hmm. but they like move around <laughs> inside oh like they, yeah they don't fit that snug in there but someone will have like an old star wars set mm-hmm. with like the little stormtrooper that comes with like the bigger monster that he rides or something right and th- those will get graded but i'm like Man, you could just tip that the wrong way, and the box is going to dent. Mm-hmm. So, or the some graders just aren't comes doing busting it right. Out. I know some some graders. I'm just like they're just like sure, send us shit, and we'll put it in a plastic case and slap a number on it. And you can pay us. Yeah, and there's zero integrity. As long as your card doesn't bounce, uh-huh. we'll do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> right, chief. exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, but before we get into the episode where we cover just our favorite free comic book day books that we picked up, there were a few that we all read. Mike D read a ton of free comic book day books. Oh, yeah. I got a package of every free comic book day that our LCS got. Yeah. So that was a kind of a cool thing. They offered a bundle for $50 and as one copy of all the books that came out but the $50 went towards charity a, a charity yeah which i thought was great local children's hospital they do a toy drive for it uh can i say that we did show up at 8 a.m. I was going to see if we were going to get into this. To make sure that we got the comics we were looking for. At the time, I didn't know they were doing this like bundle thing. Um, but we show up thinking it opens at 8 a.m. The comic shop had listed on their Facebook page when they opened, but they accidentally did it in the <laughs> like Alaska's time zone. It was like UNK yes. or something like that. AUK. AUK. So we had two hours to kill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we walked around like an outdoor strip mall. We did and drank coffee like on a yeah fiery hot day. Yeah, we're drinking hot coffees in the sun. We did the coolest nerd thing we could do right out of a Kevin Smith movie, and we loitered in front of a CVS CVS drinking coffee, <laughs> talking about comic books. We both stiffened up because a cop pulled up and started walking towards us, and we were like, oh, are we going to get kicked out of here? Oh, fucking here we go. And then he walked right past us and didn't give a shit what we were doing. Right, because we were 35-year-old males <laughs> yeah, I was like, drinking coffee. I was like, why was I nervous that this co- cop was going to kick me out of the front of CVS? You have a torrid past. You don't know what kind of warrants are going to pop up. We just look like weird scrubs up to no good. <laughs> but- I have nowhere else to go. Before we get into the the books, I want to talk about some comic book news that came out recently. Okay. So Jonathan Hickman uh, came out in an interview, yeah. or said in an interview, that after the Inferno event, which is uh, the the latest event coming out in the X-Men line, he's leaving X-Men. Papa X-Men, the father of all things. Dr. Doctor X himself. Over <laughs> Dr. X. Yeah, he's been helming it for a long time since Powers and House of X. It's flown by. It really has. I know when he said he had like a three or four year plan or whatever for it that I was like, oh man, we're going to have Hickman X-Men forever. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like, I think back and I'm like, wow, it has actually kind of been that long already. Right. And this is about the right time he said he was going to step away. But uh, he's fucking killed it. I think it's like a legendary X-Men run the you, it's hard to compare like x-men runs between like creators and authors and things now because right. you have like architects of storylines that are overseeing several things through several titles and then you've got individual good voices mm-hmm. telling x-men stories right that it's hard to focus on a singular series and judge it against you know what chris claremont did between issues you know, number blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Well, you bring up Chris Claremont. He was there for 25 years. Right. So it's hard to well, go I, up against that. Well, no, and I think what, what I'm trying to say is that you can judge, like, certain Claremont runs mm-hmm. against other creator runs. Yeah. Obviously, no one can match his body of work on X-Men. Sure. But you might say, like, where does this stand with, like, you know, this story arc or that story arc. Yeah, that makes sense. Or this era or that era. Um, and I think the Hickman stuff is going to be in the conversation of, like, some not the greatest of all time, but um, I think one of the notable yeah. X-Men stints. Hickman made the X-Men relevant again in a way that people didn't think they could be. Mm-hmm. They were brought to the forefront of the conversation again. Yeah. X-Men had, had always been in the background of just, like, kind of doing their own thing and Hickman literally pulled them from the darkness and we're just like all right we are going to be the hot topic yep. for the next four years and he did that so successfully I wasn't necessarily a true believer when the thing was starting because I was like the problem with X-Men always has been how convoluted it is and then you hired Jonathan Hickman mm-hmm. <laughs> like the most like in the weeds, think about like the background philosophies of the characters and do these abstract ideas. Um, but it worked here. Mm-hmm. I think you had to read and buy a lot of books for it to work. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, it, it worked for me. 
I think it was this weird thing where it made you draw a line of just like, I am an Avengers person or I'm an X-Men person because <laughs> I can't afford both. Yeah, right. Because Hickman, Too many things. Yeah, Hickman threw down the hammer of just like, well, we have 18 books. Yep. And you need to read them all. Yep. This, this, the past few years is one of the major reasons why I went ahead and decided to take X-Men books out of my Marvel run of comic mm-hmm. book boxes. We've talked about that a couple times. I think on the Patreon. But there are books that I just didn't think I didn't think I'd be adding like another twenty issues to my like Excalibur collection anytime right. soon. And here I am <laughs> a couple years later with like all these all these new comics for all these X titles and it was just getting unmanageable in in my Marvel boxes. So good on them. They did it. I I, I know that Jerry Duggan is doing the current X title, X Men title. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the plan is to hand it off to like him, maybe Teeny Howard. I know that. I think isn't like Jordan White. He's the have edit- they already kind he's of the editor of uh-huh. com, uh, the X Men. He's the X Men editor right uh, now. Okay, and so he's still. I think he's still following Hickman's plan, or at least he knows the blueprint of it. So he's keeping the ship upright. But I think for going forward, I think. Uh, who you just mentioned, Duggan. Duggan is going to be the main X Men guy. So, do we know is Hickman ejecting before we thought he was going to? I it was always up in the air. I think it came as a surprise for most people, and a lot of, there's a lot of knee jerk reactions of to of like, oh well, the X Men books aren't going to be good anymore because there's so many good writers. Right. I doubt they're all going to like leave with Hickman. So no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, I think he was just moved on to a different project. Yeah, I think it was well known within their offices that after Inferno, he was going to be out. Uh, my my hope would just be that someone doesn't come in and like blow it up. Mm-hmm. That we would just kind of like continue with this trajectory that's normally when things work best. I assume. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And he's not he's not leaving for Substack. That's I I was kind of kind of bring that up because he's got that universe thing that he's working on with I think with Teeny Howard yes. and a couple other people uh, and uh, Ram V. That's right, yeah. And so they're what a team. Oh man, and there's some amazing artists on that project. That'll be cool uh, if they can figure out a way to get the comic books to people. <laughs> they still yeah. don't have a designated reader, uh-huh. a comic book reader. But anyway, the, he's allu- Jonathan Hickman's alluding to that he's staying with Marvel and going to start a new mystery project. Okay. I don't know. He hasn't said what it is. Yep. I think in my mind it may be Inhumans. I'm I've kind of given up on Inhumans, but I guess if so, if, if anyone spring, could bring him if back, if he springboarded X Men pretty well, maybe he could do the same with Inhumans. The stories are just too similar, in my opinion. X Men and Inhumans. Yeah. The whole thing with like, <laughs> well, isn't a, that... a people that like. At puberty, uh-huh. get powers, right. and then they manifest in all these different ways. Well, isn't that perfect? If Marvel wants to relaunch in humans, they saw you know Hickman bring back the X Men in such a powerful way. I'd rather them just focus on the X Men. I think. Okay, so then where does Hickman go now? I could see. I mean, the the sort of titles that you would leave for would probably be something bigger, like. An Avengers type things. Does Jason Aaron leave Avengers? Jason Aaron is slated to stay on Avengers for the next two to three years. Okay. And then Zadarsky's still on Daredevil, even mm-hmm. though his run's ending. We talked about that. They're getting a new number one. Right. But it's a continuation of the current run. Yep. And so he's he's still on that. You have um you know, X Men's taken care of. He just left X Men, so he's not gonna go back to it. I mean, every other major character, I mean Donnie Cates is on Hulk. Al Ewing and Ram V are on Venom. I mean, who else? Death do you of go Doctor to? Strange is coming up, so he's never coming back. Ever. If we know anything about comics, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy that they're going to kill Doctor Strange. <laughs> he's never coming back. So I mean, and um, oh shoot, who's writing the new Black Panther? It's not Hickman. So I mean, yeah. I don't know who. Maybe Cap. Yeah, Captain America. Could be is Coates. Coates might be leaving that, or he might have already said has an exit date on his run. I'm not sure. Yeah, and then uh, I think Christopher Cantwell is still on Iron Man. Yeah, and Donny Cates is still writing Thor. Yep. I don't. I don't know where he goes. Hmm. Maybe a Demolition Man. Yeah. Oh shit! I don't know when Dan Slott's leaving Fantastic Four. No, but Hickman's already written for Fantastic Four. So 
We can only speculate I so know, much, Greg. And that's what I love. But our <laughs> listeners are probably bored of it. <laughs> so moving on to the next bit of news. Uh, in the previous episode, we talked about Walmart. Yeah. And their snafu with secret expensive variants put into their bundles. Yeah, for comic ratios books. and retailer incentives. And the world went crazy and set upon Walmarts to find these secret variants. And I wanted to do my own independent research uh, like the d- digilant comic book reporter that I am for this show. Uh-huh. And I went to my local Walmart yep. to investigate. And sadly, I have to report, when I approached all the comic book bundles, they had been ripped open yeah. and flipped through. And uh, a message to all those people that do that, please go fuck yourselves. <laughs> These books aren't for you. These are for kids to discover and enjoy new things. Yeah, And why not let them find a one in five hundred. Yeah, it, it's gonna get fucking wrecked. Who gives a shit? Yeah, it, it. It. I hate this that these scammers and scalpers are are going to Walmart's and just cutting up these books and trying to find, uh, you know, these rare ones and trying to sell them on eBay. It's bullshit. It's yeah. fucking bullshit, and I hate it. I know. I hate that this has become a thing now for my hobby. Yep. I used to work at like an outdoor mall in Kansas City, and the store I was in sold blind boxes of like kid robot toys, mm. and every once in a while you'd walk by someone down there just like halfway through opening every single box and you're just like oh my god yeah leave the store bro what are you doing i wish i could do more than ask you to leave but like (laughs) that's all i could do i don't get that kind of you're just like ruining so much merchandise you are like ruining the whole fun of it and the blind box with with these comic bundles and those toys you just talked about yeah the bit is you don't know what you're getting. I know. You have to all buy the fun it. In it. You dipshit. Mm-hmm. My God. It's a little trinket. It costs like four dollars at the time, and I think they're more expensive now. I think they're like ten. They've upped the price. But at the time, they were like four bucks, and it's just like, do you want a little trinket or not? Yeah. Get the fuck out. If you want to buy a special one, get on eBay and do it. Don't ruin the fun for everybody by opening like. 50 boxes in a store. Fuck off. Yeah, it's bullshit. Now now we can't sell these mm-hmm. because they've been opened. No one wants them after they're open. Moron, what do you think? You're, guess what? You just bought all these. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I'm checking you out myself. I wish. Uh, and then the last bit of news, it's just to carry on from last episode. More creators are going to Substack. Yeah. The conversation is going back and forth, whether this is a good thing, whether this is a bad thing, whether it's a flash in the pan or it's going to be here to stay. The newest one has been Donny Cates is starting a, like a comic book publisher, like Kids Like Chains, with mm. Ryan Stegman through Substack. Not Image, okay. I think, I think they're getting printed through Image. Okay, but it's, it's but initially so, releasing on Substack. It's so confusing, and people are always yeah. just like, "Well, it's kind of like Patreon." No, it's not. It's not like Patreon at all because Patreon is something that is offered when there's something free. Like, we have a Patreon because we Uh have a free show you can listen to. If you want extras that aren't vital to this show, we have a Patreon. Right. Substack is being advertised as something that is so secretive and so vital that if you want to be on the inside circle with your favorite creator, you need to subscribe and pay to be in the know. Yeah. And that's bullshit. I'm sorry. I I think that's so dumb. I don't know enough about it, I think, yet to say whether I like it or dislike it the one thing i can say is just that i i was looking through it um over the past week just seeing what creators i really loved had them and several of them did and most of them were charging around seven dollars a month and i was like it just adds up it does add up so quick and it adds up in a way that's not beneficial to me because i don't own anything yeah if you put out a comic book at seven bu- seven dollars, like if Donny Cates puts out a seven dollar comic uh-huh. book, I could buy that. Yeah, hold it and put it on my shelf, and see that I bought something, and then my mo- that my money went towards something. Yep. With Substack, it's so abstract, and like the murkiness of w- how they're going to release these books is so unknown that I'm yeah. just I'm not. Yeah, you don't ready know what you're going to get. Like if it was the cost of a comic book, mm-hmm. and you knew you were going to get a comic book a month. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm getting or when I'm going to get yeah, it. Yeah, right. Like, no, don't compare it to Patreon because it's not a Patreon, uh-huh. which our Patreon does cost a comic book, and yeah. you get so much content. <laughs> yeah, we do an episode a week. So I'm still so on the fence, but I am just 
entrenched in the conversation. Yeah. I'll have to see. I don't I don't think I'm realistically going to be able to afford that much digital content. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Well, we already talked. You'd have to get on your desktop to read this stuff. Right. So already a no from us. Enough of the news. Let's get into the podcast. But before we do. But before we do. <laughs> we're sipping on the newest Space Camper mm. Boulevard beer. If we get a little crazier as the episode goes on, that's because our newest Space Camper character is Major Volta, the Imperial IPA. Major Volta. The booziest of all Space Camper beers so far. What percentage are we looking at seven percent. Seven percent. No, 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 no. Sorry, <laughs> it's eight point eight percent. Okay, that's what I was like. I was like, seven's a little low for what <laughs> I thought this was. Uh, big bold flavor. If you're a big hops person, this is the hoppier of any of the Space Camper beers so far. It's got a wicked looking bad guy robot on it. I think so far all the other Space Camper beers and characters that they've released mm -hmm. have been heroes. Yes. This is our first bad guy. This is our villain. I love that it's the Imperial IPA. You've kind of got the Star Wars sort of yeah. <laughs> thing behind it. The can is black instead of a lot of the other ones have been like silvers and greens. So yeah. The, so if you, the if you, wickedly hoppy and bitter. If you like your beers hoppy and ready to kick you in the taste buds, pick up a Major Volta from Boulevard, from Boulevard Brewing Company. Brewing Company. First Issue Club approved. For official beer of the First Issue Club. Let's get into some free comics. Let's get into some free comics. Which one do you want to talk about first? Let's talk about the hypest of the hype. The one that when we were in line, and there was a long line this year yep. to get in the free comic book day. A lot of nerds with clammy hands wondering if they're going to get their hands on House of Slaughter. Just nervously... Rocking back and forth in line. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was doing it. I was up on my tippy toes seeing, trying to get an idea of how many they had on the table. Right. And they did, honestly, they didn't have that many. I, the, Out of all of them, it was the least amount. It was the lowest stack. And I don't know if that's because some shops are like holding some for themselves. Like mm -hmm. it, it on eBay for a minute there, it was selling for 10 bucks a copy. And I think it's dropped down considerably since. Yeah. I don't know that, like, I think people were maybe expecting something out of control to happen in this that was going to, like, change the direction of the, the something universe. is killing the children yeah. universe. But I I wouldn't say that necessarily happened. No, it's just kind of a setup, just a real... It's light and quick. Easy, easy setup for what Enter the House of Slaughter is going to be. And it, to be honest, it was more of, like, a continuation of something is killing the children than I thought it was going to be. I don't know that like this book will ever get released as a comic you can pay for, or if it is, maybe it's like an introductory portion of a thicker issue because it was mostly kind of adjunct extra stuff, right? Right. It It, it kind of bridges the gap between like, we're going to take, it seemed like it was ha maybe half the length of a normal comic. Does mm -hmm. that sound right? That sounds about right. And say, okay, these are these characters we always throw to and something is killing the children, the secret organization that sends her around to all these cities. This kind of gave you a recap of who Erica was and how she became part of the group and um, reminded you that they're fucking pissed at her and they're sending someone to take care of business. Mm -hmm. Um and it, I don't think it really introduced new characters that we haven't seen yet. Does that sound right? It sounds yeah, that is right. And it's just like I think it's the taste, like a little sampler mm -hmm. of what to expect for Enter the House of Slaughter, which is yeah. this dude going to straighten out Erica. Yeah, because he's been kind of covering for her for the entire something that's killing the children. Yep. And so that's what I think it's going to be. I think it'll probably. Go in twists and turns that we don't know that are going to happen. Yeah. If we know Tiny Onion like we know Tiny Onion. <laughs> so I think this is just this was just like your your sampler of yeah. what to expect. And he's going to be the star of this book, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I One thing that kind of got articulated in this that we've gotten maybe like a hint of in Something is Killing the Children, but was explained or hashed out a little more, that these like teeth bandanas that they wear kind of demark them and their ranking within the mm -hmm. house of slaughter or like what 
sect or expertise level right. they kind of have. Yeah. And there's only a couple of them with the black masks that Erica has, mm-hmm. which maybe denotes them as hunters or something. I think so, yeah. And he's the other one. Yes. So it's kind of cool to see that like she's got a counterpart. He's in closer with the higher ups or the white masks. Um, and now he's coming after her. There are blue masks, a couple other things. Yeah, kind of um, a, a brilliant way to denote different ranks. The handkerchief over the face and the styling of that is so iconic and cool. Yeah, I think like ultimately, I, I gotta believe this is gonna like become a show that actually makes it past being just optioned at some point. And I think those ha- those handkerchiefs are going to sell like crazy. Oh, soon we'll be seeing them in Hot Topics yes. across the country. I 100% agree with that. And, you know, th- then I'll get sick of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, it was a fun book. It was, you know... Too much hype. Yeah, thank you. Way too much hype. It didn't satiate me enough to be like, oh, fuck, I have got to get this book when it comes out. No, I wish... They were like, so Boom here for this comic was one of like the gold tier sponsors of Free Comic Book Day. Right. For having like the premier book that everyone wants to read or get their hands on. It. I don't think it should have been as scarce as it was. They should have printed just like a butt ton of them um, just to make sure people could get it in their hands mm-hmm. and take it for what it's worth, which is a free comic book to give you a little bit of fodder to bridge a gap for new fans and give like a little extra pepper for old fans that's all it is yeah like a well-seasoned chicken yeah you know but this wasn't this was a (laughs) lame duck it's interesting that's like it seems like that's what most free comic book day books are and it's cool when you get we're going to talk about a couple marvel books and maybe get into some other big two free comic book day books later on our patreon Mm -hmm. but a lot of times big two do like big announcements yes and if you're expecting like big huge things from smaller independent publishers you're normally going to be disappointed because their whole thing is like we want you to buy our comics yep (laughs) well and i think it's like a little free thing that's just like the best part of our comic or uh, just a a taste of enough to get you uh, back in the shop to buy something or buy a trade and honestly i'm kind of worried about enter the house of slaughter Mm mm-hmm I think Tiny Onion may be stretching himself a little thin with this something that's killing the children universe. Yeah, you think they're well. I don't think this this denotes its own book, like that it's uh-huh. it's necessary. I trust that he's got enough planned for this to be. Oh, of I'm not interest. saying he doesn't have anything planned. I'm just yeah. saying, do we need it? Yeah. Like I almost wonder if this couldn't be just like a side story in the back of the book each issue. Okay. But that's just me. Being a hater, yep. I got I got a big old cup of haterade next to my major <laughs> Volta. So you're just basing that off of this, though. I think it, when the normal run of this comes out, we'll be like, oh shit. Yeah, I hope so. I hope I get my teeth bandana, plenty to love, <laughs> cleaned and ready to it read enter the house of slaughter. <laughs> All right, what's up? What's up next? Avengers, free comic book day. Avengers number one by Jason Aaron, our good friend Jason Aaron, local local boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved what's happening and what's going to happen uh, past issue 50. Right now we're in the She-Hulk Winter Soldier Red Hulk thing, which I could take or leave. <laughs> but um, my my our, well, our good friend Andy Vargas told me that the reason that this set of Avengers by Jason Aaron is so good is is that it's fun again. It is fun. And it's I like, agree with that. And that wasn't something... After the Thor run, mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting something so funny right. and, like, adventurous from Jason Aaron, but it it really is, like, tonally lighter. Yeah. It's almost like it kind of reminds me <laughs> of, like, a Robert De Niro sort of career. Oh, okay. Where, like, you spend the early part of your career oh, God. doing the... Super like, serious roles. Super serious and heavy stuff that garners all the respect for you. Uh-huh. And then once you've like <laughs> slogged through all that, you're just like, can I just have some fun with this? Can I do Meet the Fockers? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> that is and while, brilliant. And while it's still good stuff, it's just like, it's got to be funner to write. And oh, yeah. And it's, 
it's funner and lighter to read, which as a comic book fan, I need some of that. I can't have everything be like right. super heavy and intense. So I I love Jason Aaron. I'm I'm catching. I'm not totally caught up on the run because I read it on um, Marvel Marvel Unlimited. Unlimited. Nice. There's only so many comics I can buy a week. I no, dude, I hear you. So that's yeah, that's one of the ones that kind of got relegated to unlimited for me. And I think with this issue of the free comic book day Avengers is we're getting some first appearances from different universes, yeah, albeit right. But I guess the the thing of it is is we have Deathlocks from different universes going into different Marvel dimensions. Yeah, all the multiverses in trying to find the Avengers. Or the Avengers of that world, or like something is happening. I yeah. Oh I, no, sorry. What they're doing? They're is, going to like protect each universe, like save, yes. like the, keep the integrity of each universe. Yes, because they're hunting down the axis of evil or something, mm-hmm. which is like a amalgamation of different bad guys from different multiverses. Yeah, which is kind of fucking rad. Masters of evil. Masters of evil. Thank you. It's, yeah, <laughs> it reminds you so much of like Masters of the Universe. Yes, I thought it ripped. The, they, I, I guarantee in every multiverse we're gonna get different iterations of the Avengers. Yeah. In the in this uh, issue we got Atlantean Avengers. Yep. And so they're all like the Avengers. You had Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, yada yada yada. But they're like uh, Ad- Atlantean themed. Yeah. Right. Which I love that shit mm-hmm. to my very core. <laughs> I love variant forms of the things that I love. Yeah. So I'm going to have a real blast with this um, new run that he's doing. What's the scoop on Avenger Prime? There's a character they refer to right. who's Avenger Prime, mm-hmm. and we don't get to see who that person is. Right. But they're like, or, or I don't know if this book is set in like the future or current day or when, but there's this like avengers tower in this landscape that's just completely desolate and the the tower looks beat to shit Mm -hmm. and it seems like there's like one long-standing avenger who's survived them all Mm -hmm. or is like the greatest avenger of all time right and we don't know who who exactly that character is i don't think i'm assuming it's like a nick fury type Uh uh-huh um, An lmd that just wouldn't say die right (laughs) or i mean have we seen the Nick Fury that was left on the moon at all? Are we just to assume he's still up there being the Watcher? I can't remember if anything resolved there. I think he's still up on the moon. Okay. Uh, well, I, I guess it's safe to say it's not him. In it, any case, yeah, it'll be cool to figure out who that is and see what happens from it all. Sure. I'm excited. There's enough mystery to it. There's a whole lot of fucking fun. Yeah. I just, I am, I'm, I'm in. Jason Aaron, I'm in. If you're listening, which I know you are, you text me all the time. You say, hey, great episode. I got myself a boulevard. Good job. And uh, so I'm in. I We didn't even mention there's a Wolverine with spikes for eyes. How does he see? Uh, he sees with his heart. <laughs> there you go. Right. He sees the real you. Feels with, feels it out. Um, there's like a toddler, not maybe not toddler, but like a little kid Thanos that's part of this like yeah kid Thanos Masters of Evil gang I think that's the Masters of Evil that we're looking at in yes. that panel yeah um some badass looking Doctor Doom was yeah Doctor Doom was looked like a hybrid with another character or something I'm not totally sure what the story was there I think I saw Destiny from the X Men but maybe that was like Eternity oh, they've kind of got like good call yeah but I think it was Destiny. There was like a Venom that looked like he kind of had like a Hydra logo with mixed with the spider. Yeah, or, I th- or maybe thought that was, it was just like a, a weird Spider-Man. It could have been like a Punisher logo. Or, oh, okay. It, it, I mean, it looked like a cross between the normal Spider logo and like a skull thing. Yeah. So I'm not totally sure what the deal is there. There's and a there's green like goblin. Some, there was like some like weird robot looking thing. I would I thought that was like a. I think that's the Destroyer. Destroyer, yeah. Okay. From Thor. It's dope. It's. Buck wild and crazy and yeah. just a lot of fun and I know there's not going to be a ton of stakes which is great. Yep. Which means I can just go in and just let it be brain candy and just enjoy it. So the backup story in this comic kind of followed along the same vein. Okay. Yeah. Of being fun destruction. Yes. And this is I think the reason a lot of people picked up this book was mm-hmm. to get a peek at the Ryan Otley Donny Cates. Uh, no wait sorry. Ryan Otley, Al Ewing, 
Mm-mm. Thor, wait. Donny Cates is doing is, Hulk. It is Donny Cates now. Yeah. Okay. Donny Cates is I, doing Hulk with I get Ryan so Lee. mixed up <laughs> because those two guys just switched places. They flip flopped, yeah. <laughs> Al, Al Ewing is on Hulk and Donny Cates is on Venom. They're switching places. They're trading places. R&B. Right. So right now, Ryan Otley and Donny Cates are doing the new Hulk. Yeah. What did you think about it? First impressions. I. Love the current Hulk run. Like we said, <laughs> everything, like we appreciate some levity in certain things, but I was just tonally, the shift is so huge yes. from Immortal Hulk Yes, that I was just kind of like, whoa, this is like an entirely new direction mm-hmm. that seems like it's just like leave the Immortal Hulk stuff in the past or it comes to a resolution that leaves Bruce Banner in a place where he's just like in a different state of mind. So uh, it seemed to me the takeaway is that Hulk is exploring the cosmos in like a little one-man spaceship or something. Yeah, so we get Hulk taking on MODOK. He busts up AIM because he needs some tech to like go into space. Yeah, he throws a train (laughs) through through AIM AIM headquarters. (laughs) And takes on MODOK, essentially leaves him for dead. Uh Uh-huh. And steals a bunch of tech for a, a spaceship. Modoc, we should mention, gets in a giant mech suit. Oh, yeah, and it's called call- something. He calls it Godos, <laughs> giant organism designed only for smashing. Which is fucking great. <laughs> Very Donny Cates. Yes. <laughs> first first appearance of Godos. So there's a lot of like fun fan service things happening here. And like we, we mentioned, I think, tonally on, on brand with like some mm-hmm. of the some of the things we said we like about Avengers. So yeah, I mean we we don't know how Immortal Hulk has ended yet. Mm-hmm. And so we don't know what Hulk we have here. Yeah. Or if there's a jump ahead in time or something right. and we're going to kind of figure out what happens later. Right, because he says the Avengers uh, don't like him right now. Yeah. And he's just kind of on his own. Yeah. And so I he alludes to that he's getting the fuck out of Dodge on that spaceship and so we don't know where he's going to go. Yeah. I guess he figures, I don't know if this is like a classic Hulk existential crisis thing mm-hmm. where he's like, I've I've always tried to do this thing where I hide myself away because all I do is hurt. Mm-hmm. And maybe he's thinking in the void of space. He can just like. No one can hear you hurt. <laughs> no one can hear you smash. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. It was just, it is hard for me to react to because it's just so different. But right. I'm. You can bet your ass I'll be buying it. Oh, and you bet your ass we'll be covering it yeah. <laughs> on this show. So it, it was a quick taste. So I, I, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Uh-huh. I'm a little confused and yeah. disoriented, but I am definitely interested. And God damn it, does that Ryan Otley art look good? He's, yeah, I'm a fan of his. He sure. is just a fucking monster. And I hope we get to see the Hulk rip apart somebody. <laughs> Because Ryan Otley is very good at drawing guts. Oh, the bloody stuff. From yes, his days is. at Invincible. Yes, that's right. Let's move on to Spider-Man and Venom. Spider- uh, uh, Zeb Wells is doing Spider-Man, right? So he wrote the story in this. Mm-hmm. Is he is he getting Amazing Spider-Man or Spider-Man? Yes. Okay. After, after Nick Spencer leaves at 74, Zeb Wells is coming in with an assisting writers group. Okay. With... Kelly Thompson. Oh, whoa. And um, Saladin Amen. Wow. Like, they'll be like kind of rotating in. Okay. But main is Zeb Wells, which Rad. is from the small tidbit we got in this, fucking great. I'm a big fan of his. I like all the stuff he writes. So I, I'm ready for it. Oh, totally. I was. N- I was and still am not a huge fan of the Z- of the Nick Spencer run that's happening right now. Uh huh. It's been floundering for a couple years. Yeah. And so I'm excited to get some new blood in there. The art looks great, and the 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 tonally it's great. However, we ain't following Peter. No, Ben Riley. It's Ben. We're following Peter's clone. The Beyond Corporation mm-hmm. is Had, is burning his old hoodie. They told him he can't dress like a teenager anymore. A four, a 14 year old with too much money. I love that line. <laughs> But he's kind of gotten, it seems like he's getting sponsored by a corporation and they're suiting him up with like high tech gear and shit. And they're like, we're going to commission and pay and support you 
to go be a superhero. Yep. And we're your like support staff. Yep. And we're your new sponsor. <laughs> you know, we, we've kind of seen sort of stuff like that, like with Peter Parker. They had like Parker Industries and things like that. But that was something that, you know, was in house, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is more like a corporation that maybe has their hold on him a little bit. So, right, you know, is he a cog or is he just like a brand new kick ass Spider Man with tons of resources like Batman? There's a lot of interesting directions for this to go. Like the little bit of information they gave us, just that he's like. Got a ton of resources. He can be back to doing what he loves, which is just saving people, being Spider-Man. Right. Um, Starting his life fresh. Early prediction. I think this organization chose Ben because Ben was always butthurt that he had to live in Peter's shadow Mm -hmm. because he wasn't the quote-unquote real Spider-Man. Yeah. And so Peter probably wouldn't have joined this organization because he doesn't want to be sponsored to be a superhero kind of thing. Yeah. And so they knew Ben was an easy target. Yeah. So and 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 that he would go along with it, so they just plucked him and goose him up and make him feel like a badass and he'll do whatever they tell him to do. Good for you, Ben. Get it, Ben. This is your season. Punch some bad guys. Yeah. So- Scar- Scarlet Spider. Never been hotter. <laughs> All right. Another one where the backup was kind of like the headliner here. The everyone, main draw. Everyone wanted to see what Al Ewing was going to do mm-hmm. with Venom. And for me, this was like the funnest thing out of these things three issues we're talking about on the main episode. Um yeah, it was kind of a an intro to what us old Venom heads are already know from Venom twenty five. Yeah. About how Eddie Brock is like the king in black and can control symbiotes all over the universe and that Dylan is still trying to come into his own as the new Venom with chains instead of webs. And so, you know, it, it was more of a refresher for me than really anything new. I mean, we saw flashes of like new villains, maybe, right? Yeah. Well, and I think we saw a grown up Dylan. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so thank you. Like, this what is, was that? This has got to be jumping ahead in time. Either that or they drew him wrong. <laughs> yeah. One of the two. <laughs> Something, because that was, that looked like a 35 year old Dylan. Yeah. He either got depicted 20 years older on accident or on purpose, <laughs> one of the two. But he's, he's grown up now and Eddie's like gone. Yes. Yeah. And we knew he was out in outer space. They show him as like the king in black doing like his symbiote heralding, essentially. Yep. Going and saving new little symbiote spawns and guiding them in the right way. We got a hint that one of them maybe was a bad egg. Yeah, a glitch. (laughs) And then they go on to like board a uh, spacecraft that's been overtaken by space pirates and he's going to like rip the space pirates apart. Yeah. Um. So, one, you get cool Eddie Brock tearing people up. You get Dylan Brock doing crazy Venom stuff. They mention that Eddie is dead at one point. Mm -hmm. And then when we do see Eddie Brock, it's like yesterday or something. So, like, in the interim between, like, the day Dylan is living and the day Eddie lived the day before, we think he dies in the in-between. Sure. Who knows? Um. But so again, a lot of questions to be answered. A lot of mystery. In the back, though, we get this cool splash page, which I'm like, I wish the other ones would have done this, where they give you like a bunch of hits of panels that you're just like, what's to come? And that was really exciting to be like, oh man, are these things going to be like 20 issues into this run? Are they going to be two issues into this run? Like, when are we going to see all these nutty things happen? We had, it looked like Eddie fighting Kang. Yes, with a sword. Uh huh. <laughs> there, what I think was a um, anti venom sort of character. There's like a woman stringing her hands through a symbiote oh, suit, right, 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 and right, she's right, pulling right. it apart like a web. And they had like cat eyes behind her. Yes. What was? Yeah, that's. And so I don't know if it was like the black cat gets like the a, an anti venom suit at some point, or if this is like Shriek just became. An anti venom mm-hmm. sort of character. Well, Felicity in the Absolute did Carnage get it run. in the King and Black series for a minute. Yeah. She got the symbiote suit. Right. I don't know. That's very yeah. I remember that panel. But that that art was cool. Dylan was on fire <laughs> in, in one scene. <laughs> so fire still a problem. There was like a giant 
woman god monster thing Mm -hmm. that looks like it's maybe some sort of relic of the old king and black reign oh okay or something and then there's like a hella looking yeah that dude god thing that thing looked rad as shit so they're just those flashes of those like there's like six panels in the back on the last page of it where you're just like oh shit i want to see this stuff (laughs) And then what is is this the book where it also did the Jessica Jones? Yeah, there was like a Jessica Jones Kingpin storyline. What was that? I don't know. I that might be part so Chip Zdarsky wrote that backup story. Yeah. And Greg Smallwood did the art for it, uh-huh. which I love Greg Smallwood. Dude's a champ. He's so talented. And I would love to see him do like Daredevil stuff or or whatever. He's I, doing a new book on DC called Human Target. Is he? Yeah, which looks Human Target. Is it like a one of the sharpshooters or something? Do you know who the Human Target character is? Follows this guy who, like, if you're has if you have like a hit on you uh-huh. from like an assassin or somebody, he takes your place and like dresses <laughs> as you, so you can escape, <laughs> and so you become the target. Like he becomes the human. He target. becomes the target. And so the that's covers funny. he has done, Greg Smallwood, are just bonkers good. Oh, that's awesome! I'm looking forward to that. But it's kind of like a, the the premise of this story was that like Kingpin is has, unhinged, is unhinged, and has killed a bunch of like Marvel characters. Yeah, and you're ju- and he's just kind of like, what have I done? It was in it was intense. It mm-hmm. was written very like heavily and seriously. It's kind of in line with the Chip Zdarsky Daredevil stuff. I don't, I my, I'm kind of speculating that this might be like a side Elseworld sort of story wherein Kingpin is kind of fully unleashed and okay gets everything he's ever wanted and then regrets it. Well, I mean, because Chip has done Spider-Man life story mm-hmm. where it's like an alternate reality of like we see Peter age yeah. correctly through the decades. Mm-hmm. You kind of wonder if he's going to try to do that with either Kingpin or Daredevil. Sure. In this series. The, well, I don't know because Elektra was in the final scene dressed as Daredevil, which is the from the newest Chip Zdarsky Daredevil run. So mm. I, I I don't know wh- what this is. This might be a teaser for the new Daredevil the series. new Daredevil series he's okay. going to be doing. We'll Maybe. see if Greg Smallwood does the art for that. I'd be stoked. Yeah, very stoked. All right, uh, if you're hungry for more free comic book day, we're going to be talking about. The Batman Fear State book and a couple other, well, not a couple other, a pile. There's like a fucking ton. There's so much free of comic, comic book day days. books that, uh, that I got to take a peek at. And we'll hash that out and more on the Patreon. But we'll see you guys next week on the main feed of Fresh Issue Club. Bye. First Issue Club is brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company via Space Camper Cosmic IPA. Our music is courtesy of the fine folks at Primary Color Music. You can find, friend, and follow us on social media at First Issue Club or firstissueclub.com. You can support First Issue Club by joining us on our Patreon for additional content at patreon.com slash firstissueclub.